There's one big economic indicator that economists pay attention to when figuring out if the country is in a recession. GDP. 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 Gross domestic product. It's our biggest measure, most important measure. The current economic slowdown caused by the coronavirus crisis has many worried that the United States has entered into a recession. U.S. GDP shrank by a 4.8% annual rate in the first quarter of 2020. It's the largest contraction of GDP since the last recession and ends the longest economic expansion on record. Here's what GDP is and why it's a key measurement to determine whether the country is in a recession. This is the formula the government uses to calculate GDP. It tallies all the goods and services produced in the U.S., from the dinners we serve at restaurants to the cars we produce in factories and the flights we take from airports. According to the Commerce Department, the United States produced over $21 trillion worth of goods and services in 2019. Because GDP is a measure of the entire economy and aims to capture almost everything that's happening in an economy, economists have chosen the broad definition of a recession as two consecutive quarters of negative growth. To calculate GDP, economists first calculate consumer spending, or the day-to-day -day purchases that everyday Americans make. Consumer spending makes up about 68% of GDP. And that share has got bigger over time as the U.S. manufacturing industry has got smaller. Consumer spending fell 7.5% in March, as businesses shut down and government stay-at-home orders came into effect. Americans have continued to spend online, but what they've bought online and had delivered to their homes hasn't compensated for the loss of other activities since the pandemic started. Another major component of GDP is business investment. This includes things like companies building factories or buying machinery. That's important to the economy, not only because of the activity it produces, but also because business investment produces productivity gains. For instance, by making factories more efficient or enabling the energy industry to extract more oil and gas. Business investment was on the decline before the outbreak and has continued since lockdowns began. And there are really two main reasons for that. The first was the trade war between the US and China that created a lot of uncertainty for businesses and their investment plans. And the other were oil prices. Low oil prices were definitely a deterrent for U.S. energy companies to invest in structures and new drills and new wells. Government spending also contributes to GDP. The U.S. government spends money on everything from equipment for the military to government employee payrolls. And government spending has continued to rise through the first quarter of 2020. And it's going to increase a lot more in the quarters ahead. And that's because of the multi-trillion dollar stimulus packages that Congress has passed to help stimulate the economy out of its current downturn. GDP also adds everything the U.S. exports and subtracts everything it imports to calculate net exports. The United States has been importing more than it's exported for several decades. In the first quarter of 2020, net exports rose meaning there was a slight narrowing in the trade deficit. Normally that would be a good thing because it means that the U.S. is importing less. However, what we've been seeing is that actually both imports and exports have been falling. It's just that imports have been falling more than exports. This is not necessarily a good thing because it shows that demand is very weak. Forecasters expect a much larger contraction of GDP in the second quarter, producing the two consecutive quarters of decline that define a recession. Lots of economists are predicting declines of about 30% or more. That is an, a huge number. It is off the scale compared to um, what we've seen in, even in recent recessions. On the other hand, uh, the, the hopeful scenario is that we see this big drop in the second quarter and then the economy might start to, to recover. 